It's Good Friday and I want to bring you a reading from Hebrews chapter 12. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of the death, that is, the devil, and free all of those who, whose lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. So the writer of Hebrews, um, some people think it's Paul, some people aren't sure. But the writer of Hebrews um, gives us a series of sermons and thoughts and focus all on the person of Jesus Christ. And in this small version, uh, passage of chapter two, he expresses one of the things that we understand about ourselves in the light of the, Jesus's own truth from the Good Friday story. We were reminded that Jesus did not shy away from, from all the aspects of our existence. Jesus had friends. Jesus had enemies. He knew joy. He knew sadness. He was a tradesman. He'd been taught carpentry by Joseph. He was not just a person with a job. He was a person that God had given a calling. Jesus knew hunger. Jesus knew desire. He knew temptation. Everything you felt, everything you're currently feeling, everything you're going to feel in your life, Jesus understands those feelings. Jesus shares those experiences. Jesus doesn't just relate to you uh, in a head knowledge kind of way. Jesus has been through the challenges of life that we go through. Let that sink in just for a moment right now. Let that sink in as you're in this lockdown, as you're in this period where some things are more challenging in your life. Some things have been simplified. But let that sink in. That Jesus understands everything that you are, you are and everything that's going on for you. Now above and beyond all of that, all that he knew and all he experienced, above and beyond the joys and the struggles of life, Above and beyond all those things, Jesus knew and trusted his Father in heaven in every single step of his walk to our redemption. As we think of Good Friday, we see that in Jesus, Jesus came to know something that if you're watching this video, you don't yet know. Jesus comes to know death. He comes to know what some of us call the final frontier, the end of of this journey. Jesus comes to know death. Now the scriptures explore and explain a little of what happens to Jesus um, between his death and his resurrection, but only a little. And the truth is we'll never fully comprehend the enormity of that. We'll never understand the scope of it. And I think even um, if we, if we by faith trust Jesus and end up in heaven with him forever, I don't think we'll ever understand the depths of what Jesus did, the cost of what Jesus did. What the scriptures do say to us, amongst other things, is that Jesus was made an offering in heaven on an altar, which was the real altar, which the one in the temple was a copy of. And on that altar, through his sacrifice, the scriptures tell us we would be set free because he broke the slavery of our sin. He broke our indebtedness to sin. He broke the power of death over us, the hold that death has at the at the end, at the judgment of our lives. What amazes me about these words in Hebrews is the writer puts them down by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And these words are cosmic. They're transcendent. They travel across time because it goes on to talk about a victory, a victory that brings us to faith. And that victory that brings us to faith is what happens at the moment where we confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord. The Bible says if we confess 
with our lips and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord will be saved. And that's true whether you've already done it or whether you hear these words and you choose to do it. And you believe that Jesus is God and he's more than just a man and that this Good Friday is the day that he died for you. Um, but this victory is a is a present thing in that moment where we do it. But there's also another aspect to this victory because when we trust that he's raised from the dead, we are transformed from being enemies of God to being children of God. We're brought into God's family. But that victory also refers to a victory over the devil. And that happens at the end of time because the devil, though currently defeated, the devil is rippling his evil through um, time. The devil is echoing the harm he wishes to cause people um, day by day. And right now, with all of this awful coronavirus, the devil is one of the biggest winners of this. So many people, so many people dying and yet probably not knowing the Lord. And so he profits in his evil, but his days are numbered, the scriptures tell us. And though defeated, though um, one day judged to be done by the Lord, the devil still has his effects. And our lives, Christians know this, our lives battle because our flesh battles against the spirit. Our old self battle against uh, the new self, the new creation, because that's what happens when we become a Christian. If you commit your life to Jesus, the Bible says you are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. See, the door is open to heaven, but that doesn't mean there aren't struggles. That doesn't mean there isn't battle. There isn't fight between what God wants for you and what your old way wanted to do to you that was corrupting you, that was drawing you back away from God. The Christians know this because Christians sin. Lots of us have got sin patterns in our lives that we're still um, needing to get rid of, that we're, if we cry out to the Lord, we can get rid of. See, we battle between what we know we should do and what we actually find ourselves doing. And perhaps in lockdown, for some of us, that's really hard because there's lots of things we're doing that we know we shouldn't be doing. Well, the Lord is near. And on this Good Friday, remember that this is, this is the day where we remember that he died for those sins. So commit them to him. Um, let the spirit convict you of them and commit them to him and ask him to set you free from them and then live by choice as if they're not there change well look this scripture still goes on and says there is more here um, because being made in our image the father casts the glorious son brings him into the same limited mold that we have our lives are limited our existence is a chapter for some long, some short um, in this life. But Jesus is cast into the same mould that we have. And what glory there is in knowing that as fallible and able to fail as we are, when Jesus is cast into our humanity, Jesus did not fail. Jesus did not fail you. He did not quit. He did not give up. He did not sin. He did not give himself over to those desires that were there, that were calling out to him. He didn't listen to the whispers of the devil. He didn't listen to the desires of the crowd. He didn't listen to the criticisms of the scribes and the Pharisees. He was faithful. And this is what makes him, what the scripture here says, a merciful and faithful high priest. Now, I've often thought about the priests. The priests um, were called and once, one a year served as a high priest. And they were... Um, asked once a year to go into the holy hope holies to make atonement for the people now what faith they had because the high priests high priest was there and the other priests um would tie a rope around his leg uh, and his ankle to when he went in if god cast him dead because he hadn't atoned for his own sin properly that'd be the easiest way to drag him out well i don't think i'd fancy that job and i don't think many people would either but this is this is the the truth aside from that silliness I'm not sure what you're suffering with today. I'm not sure what you're struggling with. I'd be happy for you to tell me. I'd pray for you. I don't know, but I'd be happy to. But in the suffering that Jesus had, there was an immense barbarity on the cross. Hebrews tells us that in that suffering, Jesus was tested. Now, I want to confess that on some Good Fridays, I've watched one of the films of Jesus' life, though I've never watched The Passion. See, for me, a film that glories in how Jesus died without explaining why Jesus died is not likely for me. See, how he died 
um, is awful. Why he died is worse, but essential. And Jesus suffered that cruelty. Jesus was tested beyond anything imaginable. And yes, people have been tortured. Yes, people have been brutalised. Man's inhumanity to man is intolerable. And the scriptures call us to a new kingdom. But Jesus' um, suffering wasn't just physical. It was also metaphysical. It was spiritual. It was transcendent again. The physical we understand if we read about what the Romans did to him, about the abuse that he suffered at the hands of the Jews as well. But this metaphysical, this spiritual suffering is that he took on that cross the weight of our sins. He took on the cross the burden of our evil. He took and received the heat of hell, of the wrath that God has for all that stands in opposition to him. And that's what happens when we sin. Our actions say that we are better than God. That's what the first sin with Adam and Eve went back to. Did God really say, the serpent said, and Eve and Adam were tempted and they gave in to sin. So all of that pressure, all of that punishment was on him, not just for the people around him, but for all people, for you and I, for all people yet to come. And that's why this is a cosmic piece of scripture that transcends time. And Jesus' suffering is just utterly unmanageable, unimaginable. Well, to, to respond to all of that, we just need to say glory be to Jesus Christ on this Good Friday, because there is nothing in our experience as people now, then or yet to be. There is nothing in your experience that he cannot help you through. Well, I want to close this this thought. I was going to say it was brief, but I don't know if it was or not, um, with one of my favourite scriptures. And it's the first that I ever memorised. It's part of Philippians 2. Philippians 2 isn't written for Good Friday, but what a word it is. I want to say, God bless you. May, may you encounter the merciful and faithful, faithful high priest, Jesus, who gave his life for you on this Good Friday. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 from 6, verse 6 to verse 11. Who? Jesus. This is about Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. But he emptied himself and he took the form of a slave. And being born into human likeness, he humbled himself to death, even obedience of the death on a cross. And therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that the name of Jesus every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. May God bless you this Easter time.